Good morning, ladies and you brave men in the room. Good morning. Good morning. Now, nothing amazes me more than the power of a woman, the resilience of a woman, the focus of a woman. And I'll share my example with you this morning. My mother Rosa, who unfortunately could not be here today so this morning to share this wonderful breakfast with us, started her day off by going to the doctor with her brother, my uncle. And I said, Mom, why would you do that? Uncle Nick is articulate, he speaks the language, he drives, you don't. What is the purpose of you going to the doctor with Uncle Nick? So I can't be home alone. So you're going to be at my breakfast? She says, yes, I'll be home by 9.30. Yeah, good, good 9.32, phone breaks. It's mom. She says, where are you? She says, uh, I'm headed to grandma's. I says, why, what happened? He's not feeling well. I says, so what are you going to do? She says, I just called the ambulance. I'm going to go with him to the emergency room. You know, then she calls back, 9.50. She says, we're in the ambulance, we're headed over, I'm going to try to get there by the end of the breakfast. Now why do I share this with you? Only a woman could possibly take on those responsibilities and those mm -hmm. tasks and prioritize all of them and be everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. So today, we're here to acknowledge and appreciate every woman. And as my then seven-year-old son remarked, and I love telling this story, and I get to tell it a couple of times a year, so if you heard it, please be patient. It was Mother's Day. And I go up bright and early, and I run to my boys' rooms, and I say, boys, you gotta get up. It was a Saturday. I'm like, why? He says, come on, it's important you gotta get up. And they're like, why? He says, it's Mother's Day. We gotta do something special for mom. He says, Dad, it's Mother's Day every day. <laughs> and we roll all over back to sleep. <laughs> I stand here today as a strong man only because I was raised by a strong woman, my mother Rosa. I believe I'm a good man only because I am with a great, caring, loving, and supportive wife. That makes me a more tolerant wife. <laughs> Sharing the wife. I am very lucky to be in my life for God. I believe to be generous because I live with a woman who gave more in life than she got, my sister Elsie. I believe I am only successful because of the dedicated, committed staff that I have. The hard work of women in my life. With Anna, Mara, Alicia, Gina, Wilma, Virginia. And your partnership is terrible, Dylan. Uh, <laughs> I think you wrote your name here. It's about women. <laughs> And I want to refer to, where is she? My former chief of staff, Natalia Fernandez. I'm following the form of her boss. In case you don't know, Natalia Fernandez, who was with me for five years, is now the Bronx liaison to the governor himself, Governor Moore. I am blessed and fortunate, I believe, only because of the women in my life that includes the honorees and all of you that are here today. I am brave only 
because of the tough women that I serve with in the assembly, and because of the tough women that I hope to serve, such as the Honorable Annabelle Palma. This shouldn't be about me, and it really is about the women in our lives. The mothers, the sisters, the daughters, the wives, the grandmothers. And short of saying that not only appreciative to the women in our lives, but gratitude for allowing us to live with them and for really letting us think we're in charge. <laughs> letting the men think they're the head of the household and truly. They are the connect and they can serve us in any which way they want. And because they are the men, they keep our heads tied to our fathers. So women, God bless you. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this world so compassionate, caring, and loving. I want to acknowledge some of the individuals in this room. Let me begin with Gene Hill, the president of Tracy Towers Men Association. Tommy <laughs> Messina, representative Thomas McCrowley. My very own Andrew Siegel, Andrew Peter. My very own John McManus. Thank you very much. Adam Bermudez, Councilman Andy King's office. And those hats in the Woodland Precinct Council and many more hats to be there. The beautiful and elegant Edith Blitzer, President of the The Honorable Annabelle Palmer. Our Commissioner of Parks, Iris Rodriguez Rosa. <laughs> Sandra Cruz, Carl Hastings Office. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia Fernandez, former Chief of Staff and Governor Cornwall of the Ross Union. <laughs> Patricia Keir, National Council of Negro Women. My dear friend, Judge Fernando Tapia. Yeah. Charles Verlick. Where's Charles? Very 49 precinct member. <laughs> Miriam from the Bronx. Man. Where's Miriam? Yes, she is. Stand up, Miriam. You are going to have a good night. Supreme Court Judge, will you please stand up? Thank you. 
community leader, religious volunteer, and former public servant. She is a devoted wife, daughter, sister, mother of three, and grandmother. As a real estate attorney, Ms. Armstrong has assisted many Bronx families in achieving home ownership. She has provided pro bono advice and given free first-time home buyers seminars in conjunction with local lending institutions. Yvette combines her passion for up for art and faith. She serves as a chair of the Liturgy Committee. In addition, a number of her religious paintings are prominently displayed in community churches, and two of her works were exhibited at the at the South Bronx Gallery. Yvette has spearheaded care packages for our soldiers overseas and our veterans' hospitals. She volunteers preparing meals for the elderly and homebound during the holidays. As an advocate for education, she has volunteered on public school leadership teams and parent associations and has sat on boards of private and charter schools. From 1991 to 1997, Ms. Armstrong was a mayoral appointee and served as a commissioner at New York City Equal Opportunity Practices Commission. She has also volunteered as an arbitrator in the Bronx Courthouse. Yvette and her family has been involved in an HEV program for the homeless and hurricane relief program that hit Puerto Rico in 1998. As a volunteer with Habitat for Humanity, she helped renovate and build residences for those in the Bronx, Harlem, and New Orleans post-Katrina. In all of her endeavors, there is one common de denominator. She infuses all, them all with love and a desire to bring positivity and help to others. Please give a round of applause and to congratulate Ms. Yvette Perhaps my mores, 
When you observe any art, you bring it part of your soul, part of your being and your moorings. And together, we create a marriage of sorts. For a brief moment, we are two drops in a pond, creating concentric, harmonious waves echoing into eternity. God bless you all.
Thank you very much. And thank you, man, Mr. Mark Jonas. You did a lot of things, not only for Albania, for all community here in the Bronx. I wish you the best and God bless you and your family. For your wife, children, mom, sister, and everybody. They also helping us for everything. Thank you. Also, I want to say thank you to my daughter. She helping me for everything. I am not good in English, but she helped me a lot. And I want to say thank you to her. Thank you very much, my Albanian community. You are very good to me. Thank you for coming. I thank you for everything, for all community here in New York and Bronx. Thank you very much, my district. Mr. Joe Thompson, you are the first person that you help our organization to create this organization like a little children. Uh, we grow up our organization, both of you, with both of you. You are the first person here. You are a great person. Thank you, Miss Edith. You support us every, everywhere, every time, for any, every program we have. You have our organization, our family, and police station for programs that the people have in our area. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. You, you helping us too, and we need to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Montefiore Hospital. Here, I work in Montefiore Hospital, and uh, somebody came from Montefiore Hospital. I love patients. I put my heart to help patients. It's very important. Patients from here are like a, like a family. Uh, like mom, dad, my past, my parents passed away, but uh, I miss them. And uh, when I saw patients there, looks like to me like my parents, like my sister, like my brother, like my nephew, like my daughter. I love patients. I put my, my heart to patients. And I will do every time. I love both of you and I wish health, safety, and hope and peace for every every of here, for everybody. God bless America. She was responsible for managing several centers and setting up new sites. Currently, she works as a consultant at the Mashodu Montefiore Community Center. Here, Nora trains and mentors the administrative staff. In addition, she coordinated she coordinates the center's annual family Thanksgiving dinner, which serves over 500 needy families. Nora Perry has been a member of Community Board 7 for over 30 years. She chaired the board for many years and now serves on the executive committee as secretary. She is also the chairperson of the senior service committee. She works to improve the quality of life for seniors throughout Bedford Park. Last month, Nora co-chaired Community Board 7's first veteran recognition breakfast at Lehman College, where senior veterans were honored for their service to our country. Her commitment to the senior community extends to the Bedford Park Multi-Service Center, where she has been a board member for many years. Her expertise and experience are valued by all of community, community Board 7, and she is always willing to volunteer for any community project. If you could just give a round of applause for this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for recognizing me with this award. 
I always feel that I just do what I do. I've always done what I do. You don't expect to be recognized or thanked. It's because this is what we do. So I couldn't do it without family, friends, and colleagues. And I want to accept this award for them as well as me. Thank you. Representative on the panel of education policy, educational policy. Ms. Major has volunteered for the Community School District 11 for several years. She previously served as a president of for District 11 Community Education Council. As a mother of two children, she has served as a parent advocate on the citywide parent commission on school governance to ensure that Bronx parents voices were heard on school governance issues. Ms. Major received a Bachelor of Business Administration from Baruch College. She's a licensed instructor in adult basic education and a certified mediator. Ms. Major is also a very active, she is also very active in her community. She is a co-founder and president of the Bronx Women United, president of Liberty Democratic Association, and a member of the National Council of Negro Women, North Bronx Section. Please give a round of applause to Ms. Monica. Lopez and her grandchildren, Kareem and Ephraim 
Kashal. She has accomplished much. For over 30 years, she has been a public servant to people from all walks of life. Over the past 14 years, Norma has worked both as a bus operator for the NYC Transit Authority and facilitator for the TW Local 100 Union. Norma has served over 40,000 union members and was responsible for orienting thousands of newly hired members of the NYC Transit workforce and the union. Prior to this, Norma worked for the NYC Board of Education, educating bilingual students for nearly eight years. Her commitment to her community extends to her involvement with local community associations and organizations. Norma is an executive board member of the Bronx Park East Community Association. In addition, she is the founder and chairwoman of the Kruger and Mays Block Organization, secretary of Alianza Puerto Riqueña, and the first female vice president of the Hispanic Transit Society. In addition, she is a member of the Latin Council of Latin American Advancement, Coalition of Black Trade Unionists, and an executive board member of Discover for Justice. Her commitment to ensuring that her community is the best is evident through decades of activism and personal achievements. Please welcome Ms. Norma Lopez. -Mara. Big shoes to fit. And I want everyone to give them all another nice 